uh, perch is basically a device that you set the bird on when you are not holding the bird and when the bird is not free loft in, in its chamber. And so these, these are things that you have around your yard, these are things that you might have in your house, and there's a lot of different kinds. And so we're going to talk a little bit about the, the different kinds of perches and uh, what you need to know about having a perch, for a proper purchase for your bird. The first thing we're going to talk about, let's grab a, okay, this is called a bow perch and it, it's very, very obvious. It's bow shaped. Now this is what we call a floor mount because it has a steel plate on it and it allows it to sit flat on the floor. It's weighted enough that the bird cannot just drag it around. So this, so this has to be relatively heavy with this kind of a perch. It's uh, got rope across here for, uh, for a good footing and for comfort. It's not just sitting on the steel bar. And so that's, that's very much uh, what we call a floor type bow perch. Now we do have um, a larger bow perch right here. And again, this is floor mounted. It's uh, made of just steel pipe welded together. Uh, again, you have your rope wrap covered with, uh, in this case, leather. And all perches have the same basic thing, a, way, a place to attach the bird's leash. And so they all either have a ring or some kind of a swivel or some way to attach the bird to the perch uh, so that, that the bird is, uh, is kept in the perch area. Now, the taller the perch, the longer the leash has to be because if you have a tall perch and a short leash, the bird hangs itself. And so please be very much aware of that. So that's just a couple of different bow perches, very traditional. Um, obviously you can tell these are very, very old. I've had these for 40 or 50 years and I use them all the time. And they last forever. The next is uh, what we call a ring perch, which is similar to a bow perch, but instead of um, just being a half circle, it's a full circle, again, welded to a heavy steel plate. You have your ring right there to attach the bird to. Um, with the uh, ring perch, we like to have kind of something to block the center so the bird doesn't wrap around and around in the center of it. But again, this is a, a, a ring perch. Now you can see this one's very small, and this is for a small bird of prey, uh, something like a Cooper's hawk or a sharp shinned or something along those lines. And so you get the, the right perch for the right size bird as well. This is also a ring perch that we have right here. And you can see this is quite a bit larger. And this particular ring perch is the one I use for my eagle. And so again, it's roped around it uh, so the bird has something to hold on to comfortably. It's blocked in the center so the bird doesn't go through the center. And it does have the uh, attachments here, which is a ring and a, and a swivel. Then we put the, the leash for the bird through the swivel. Now you see this one's not a floor mount. Uh, this one stakes into the ground. And so especially when you're traveling somewhere uh, these are wonderful. You can just basically, any place that you've got lawn or, or soft dirt, you can just stick them in the ground and then put your bird out to what we call weather, which means the bird is sitting outside in a safe location and, and let it just kind of relax. We put out a big bath pan for them so they can bathe and uh, you don't have to sit there and hold the bird uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that's the purpose of the perches. This is called a block perch. And, and again, forgive my perches. I get all of these perches are, you know, 30, 40, 50 years old. So they've been used forever. Uh, the block perch we use mostly for falcons because they have uh, longer toes. Their feet are more flat than, than the hawk, most of the hawks are. And so uh, they uh, have flat space works very well. Where the hawks like to grip on branches, the, the falcons like to stand on ledges on a more flat surface. And so we're duplicating that. This is actually uh, a dense rubber that has been glued on. And the dense rubber, again, gives the bird plenty of traction to hold onto something, and yet is soft enough that the bird's feet, with all of these, that the bird's feet don't get, does not get bruised, does not get infected. Um, an infected foot is a really, really bad thing. So the quality of your purchase is extremely important. And again, this, this one stakes into the ground. I do have block perches as well that are floor mount. They have a steel plate on them, but this one just stakes into the ground. Again, when you're traveling places with your bird and you want to put your bird out, having a, a, a perch that just stakes into the ground, very easy, very comfortably. Again, another steel ring uh, to attach the leash to. And then we have our indoor perch, and I need to 
come over here and show this to you a little bit. This is an indoor perch. This is what I put my birds on in the house. And let me move this down so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. Now this is called a screen perch. And uh, its name is, is appropriate. It's, it's basically what, what I've used here and is this is canvas wrapped around a, a wooden frame and stretched. And so the bird will sit on, on this perch indoors. Again, we have our uh, clip here so that, so that we can attach the bird to the perch. Uh, this one, you don't allow the bird to have a leash. This one clips right to the bird's jessies, which is the leather straps on the bird's feet. And so, and so the bird is kept very, very close. And if the bird baits or attempts to come off the perch and comes down, the screen here allows it to turn around and come right back up onto the perch. And so that's why I call it a screen perch. This is an extremely safe perch once the birds are used to using a screen perch. And I use this uh, for all of my birds that are brought indoors. And so that's kind of some of the very basics. I mean, there are bucket perches, uh, which is nothing but a, a big rubber bucket that uh, has some padding around the edge and, and a bolt, eye bolt in the middle of it to attach the leash. There, um, perches can be made out of, of uh, about a, a three quarter or a quarter of a whiskey barrel. People have made perches out of those kinds of things. Um, you can make perches out of a variety of different kinds of materials. And the, and the bottom line is, this is something that you need to sit down with your mentor, your sponsor, the person that is um, teaching you falconry, and to be able to identify exactly what bird you're going to be flying and what perches are the best for that particular species of bird. And so, you know, it's, it's not a one, uh, a one perch fits all situation. Uh, it, you really do need to have someone that is knowledgeable to basically sit down and say, well, you know, the, yeah, the, the, the uh, ring perch is, is fine, but not for a falcon, so I, you, you need to get this kind of a block perch for your falcon and to, to give you those kinds of instructions. Again, these videos are just to introduce you to what it takes to become a falconer. You, you cannot learn falconry from these videos or from any videos. You must have a sponsor, a mentor, a teacher uh, to help guide you through the process. And even after 50 years of falconry myself, there's a lot of things that I learn new every year that, peop that people do differently than I do that I've incorporated into, into uh, my art form as well. Well, the term free loft, let me kind of explain that to you a little bit. What free loft means is the bird is untethered and is able to fly around its muse or, or what we or a chamber. Mew is a falconry term that, that we use, but it's just the chamber that the bird lives in. And um, to free loft a bird is, is a good thing if the bird is not going to be handled for a while. Now, most falconers, what they'll do is when the falconry season is over, they put their birds in a chamber and the bird gets, you know, food and water uh, uh, and, and the bird is pretty much left until it gets close to the beginning of the new falconry season. And then the new falconry season, they, they do what's called take up their bird, which basically goes into the chamber and they, and they get the bird picked up. They, and they put new equipment on the bird, new anklets, new jessies, and new bells and, and transmitter uh, attachments and all the new equipment. And then they start to what's called man or gentle the bird um, back down uh, so that when the falconry season starts, the bird is, is ready to go. So it's a, it, what it becomes is a, a process of retraining every year. And, and that's really pretty normal among most falconers to, to do that kind of, of situation. Now, if the bird is um, uh, a more intimate part of your lifestyle, and, and um, so this, this is, I, I practice my falconry more of a year, uh, Eastern European style. And, and so where the bird is a member of the family, uh, the bird it will uh, frequently sleep in the house. Uh, you put the bird out into a chamber during the, during the daytime when the weather is nice. Uh, but you, the bird is, is 
really just a member of the family, very much like uh, you know, you're, you're a dog or a cat um, is, is a member of the family. I mean, Cody, our, our standard poodle, you know, he sleeps on the couch. He sleeps in our chairs. Um, if he has his way, he, he basically would, would push me out of bed so that he could have, have the bed. Um, he basically owns the house. And, and, um, it, it, and for me personally, that's kind of what a, having a pet is all about, is, is they are members of the family. Well, even though the falconry birds aren't pets, you know, they're, they're different. But the, the more we socialize them, the more we can acclimate them to um, uh, our environment, the, the, the less chance we have of having something traumatic happen, they become frightened and you lose them. And, and so when you see uh, my birds, um, you know, though Scout is free loft in his chamber, he's just, he's just flat too big. Uh, he, he, can't, he can't live in the house. And I wish he could. I wish I had a big enough home that, we, that Scout would have um, a, a very large room in the house that, you know, big family room that, that, that could support him, but it's, it's, it's just not possible. He's just too big. Uh, but as you can see right behind me, we have Kate, our, our peregrine falcon. And so she basically, and, and uh, Belle, the Harris hawk, and Helen, the other peregrine falcon, they are part of the family. They come in the house. They, they sleep at night on perches in the house. They go out to chambers in the daytime. But we tether them to the perches in the chambers. And the, why we do that is because when they're uh, out of season, they're, they're really um, beautiful couch potatoes. And they, they, they get all they want to eat. And so their, um, their willingness to have me come and just pick them up and move them around like I, I do, you know, multiple times a day um, becomes an issue. They fly back and forth across the chamber and then you have to kind of grab them and, and it develops a lot of bad habits. And so the birds that are basically an intimate part of the family, then, then we have them sit on perches, not only in the house, but on perches in the chambers outside. And they sit on perches out in the yard in, in shady spots and they get bath pans and, you know, they sit on perches in the transport boxes when we're transporting them to do our, our wildlife programs. And, and so if I were to just free loft them, that would make, um, would create some issues um, with them that I can avoid by, by, by uh, tethering them to the perches. And so now when they're, when they're on the perches, I walk up and it's like, oh, okay. And they jump up on the glove and away we go instead of having to having them flying back and forth across the chambers uh, and we're trying to catch them to go do a program. So that's, that's the difference when the birds are uh, intimately involved in family life, um, then, then we, we don't free loft them. We, we tether them on perches inside the chambers. And, and I, I know I've got questions about the perch that uh, Kate is on. That is called a pole perch which is just basically, it's, it's a round block perch on a pole that's, uh, uh, that the whole thing's about five feet tall. It has a, a, a very, very heavy, heavy steel base to it. And, and so this is a really safe perch. Um, there's nothing that they get tangled up on. And, and so she can sit on a perch like this, you know, all day long, uh, even though she does get moved around. And like I said, when we uh, are working with her and feeding her and, and uh, socializing with her. But uh, this is, is an extremely safe perch, and, and it doesn't take up a lot of room, so we can actually have this perch in the, the corner of the living room, and we just put up plastic, and we have, uh, let's see if I can show you here, what's down in the corner that's actually a, about a three-foot square plastic box that the perch is sitting inside of, and... and uh, with um, uh, absorbent, uh, what they call wee-wee pads that you put down for housebreaking your dog. 
going up the sides, and then you've got the plastic a little further up the sides, and, and this gets changed out three or four times a week. And so each bird is individual, and you have to adapt their environment to suit their personality.